Hi, I'm Johnny from UltimatePaperMache.com and I have been working on my Basset Hound. It's going a little bit slow because I have two other projects going and I'm not very good at multitasking. So I kind of work on one project per day. The other things that I'm working on is a Zazu mask for the Lion King and it's really, really close to being done. And the other one I just started yesterday afternoon is a, a pattern for a hippopotamus wall sculpture. I don't even know if I'm going to finish that one or not, but I thought it'd be kind of fun to try it. But today it's the Basset Hound's turn, and I did put some feet on there. But I also want to mention that he's probably looking just a little bit different than he did before when you saw him in the last video. There are three other videos, by the way. If you haven't seen all of them, you can find them out on my channel in the Basset Hound uh, playlist, or I'll put a link to them down below. And in those videos, you were seeing me fiddle around with the pattern that I had made for the Basset Hound because it was originally made based on a standing Basset Hound and I wanted my Basset Hound to sit down. I had to keep changing the shapes of the back legs and pushing them around and just doing all sorts of things. And I kept telling you to go ahead and redraw the pattern <laughs> before you got started because mine wasn't working quite right. I finally decided that that might not be terribly professional of me, so I went ahead and redrew the pattern based on all the things that I was doing um, to the original one to make it work. And then to make sure that the new pattern would work, I went ahead and rebuilt the Basset Hound from ground up. This is a new pattern, but I did it in exactly the same way as the old one. And like I said, this new pattern is based on the old pattern. Uh, all the things that I was doing to the old pattern. So if you've already started your Basset Hound, don't feel like you have to go out and start over like I did. I just wanted to make sure that the new people who are coming on um, who haven't started theirs yet would have an easier start for a pattern that was actually made for a sitting Basset Hound. I hope that makes sense. Um, you can find the pattern out on my website, ultimatepapermache.com slash Basset Hound. And watch the other three videos so that you can see how I got to this point. Today what I did is I put the feet on there. I'm going to show you how I did that. I'm only going to show you one uh, because they're all basically the same. But you do have to take your time doing these because you're using really tiny little pieces of aluminum foil and sticking them on with hot glue. Or you could use masking tape and crumpled paper. That works too. And you also want to make sure that you look at photographs of Basset Hound feet. There's a whole bunch of them because evidently, I, I didn't realize this before, but there's a lot of um, problems with Basset Hound feet. You can just go out to Google image search and look for Basset Hound feet and you're going to find a whole bunch of them. Also remember that you're going to be putting either paper strips and paste or paper mache clay like I am over whatever you're putting on there today. So they're going to get bigger. <laughs> also, your um, Basset Hound's legs are going to get wider when we add, um, well, it, they look like they're wearing socks that are too big for them and they just kind of slumped and, and wrinkled down at the bottom. So the legs are going to end up being heavier too. So remember that when you're working on it so that you don't end up um, making everything a lot bigger than you actually expected to because of that additional paper mache or paper mache clay and the wrinkles. So let's get started. I brought out the book called An Atlas of Animal Anatomy for Artists and I did use that. It was kind of sitting right under my basset hound when I was working on him. But frankly, I found photographs that I looked at from the internet to be an awful lot more uh, useful to me. So I'm, I'm glad that I had it out, but I can't say that it was all that helpful <laughs> if that makes any sense. On the pattern itself the place where the pattern stops at the end of the foot is where the toes start on the front foot but on the back foot the pattern actually goes in the middle of one of the large center toes. So I went ahead and filled in all of the space right there on that front foot, just widening it out and trying to make sure that it ends up eventually the same width as the other foot. Getting them both the same seemed to be kind of important and so I just kept working on that. And then I started adding really tiny little crumpled up pieces of uh, aluminum foil and stuck them on. There's two longer middle toes, then there's the shorter toes on the 
outside edges and you've got one little bump uh, that goes right at the very back of the foot. I've got several tools that I've been using to kind of smooth things out and to put things in the right uh, shapes. I'm using a, a table knife and I have a screwdriver here that was handy for making those uh, dips in between the toes. I think I used a rubber mallet on him a little bit and I've got some pliers there uh, just to, some of the toes were just a little bit too wide and that helped uh, get them back into the right shapes. I just use any tool I happen to have on hand to get that aluminum foil in the right shape. Now I will probably um, go sit down with this guy and do a little bit more work on that foot. That's what I would usually do. I, I don't usually hold them still um, when I'm working on something that detailed, um, just because it's a little bit hard, just a little bit easier to pick them up and look at them up close when you don't have a camera in the way. So I probably will do just a little bit more work on it, but not a whole lot because it's really close now to where it needs to be when we add that paper mache clay. Or you might want to use the air dry clay. I might even do that. I don't I don't use the air dry clay recipe from my website as often as a lot of other people do, but for this guy, I think I might actually, I might actually use it for this one just because it's a slick haired dog and I do want those details. So, but we'll see that that's, that's coming up later in the next one. I'm going to do his head. I've got a, um, I've got some experiments in mind for uh, trying to get the eyes in the right place on this guy, but I want to do those experiments when you guys aren't looking <laughs> to make sure that it actually works before I uh, show it to you. So uh, it's going to take a few more days before I get to that point. In the meantime, um, go make yourself a Basset Hound or anything else, and then come see me, ultimatepapermache.com. <laughs> I'll see you there.